Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to run through a little bit of a baselining exercise and this kind of spills into troubleshooting too. I was um, <laughs> at a customer place the other day. This was uh, quite interesting. They had a lot of traffic and the Wi-Fi network had performance issues and we we're poking around and I found a lot of extraneous stuff floating around and I was explaining to the customer that wireless networks are, are more time based or time sensitive rather than uh, bandwidth sensitive. So what I was trying to show them was um, the majority of the people on the network, because it was a common network, bring your own device again, so that kind of thing. Uh, people had their own personal laptops and stuff uh, and phones, and everybody has these little apps and these um, extensions on their internet browsers that uh, in this case was generating an extremely uh, large amount of packets um, and bandwidth, but mostly a lot of packets that was causing some performance issues. So I want to try to illustrate that on my computer here. So what I've got is uh, I've got Wireshark up and running here and uh, I've set up a capture filter for the MAC address of my router. That's the MAC address of my router. The reason why I did this is that way I will capture only the packets that are going in and out of my router or in other words remote or internet traffic so the local stuff my map drives my printers and all that stuff won't be captured this is a pretty easy way uh, to set up a filter to capture just the traffic coming in and out of your site so there you go that's my Mac address of my router so I'm going to click OK can hit start there you go so uh, I'm capturing some packets now you can see there's uh, two pretty well nothing so there's nothing floating around nothing really doing much so what I'm going to do is uh, come over here to my uh, web browser I'm using Google Chrome it doesn't matter if it's IE Chrome Firefox it, it doesn't matter they all have these extensions that you can um, work with so I'm gonna manage let me just do it over here so you can see it better manage extensions and you can see there's all the extensions that I have loaded and they're primarily most of them are disabled so what I'm gonna do is go through a simple little exercise um, you can watch here, let me see if I can position this properly, I'm going to move that there, move this guy here like so, and that way as I click on some of these um, extensions you will see the effect on the packet counter in the background. So right now you can see the packet counter is at 30, it's still capturing, there's just there's nothing floating into it, that's all. Um, so I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to click my first victim, the eBay extension tool. So I'm going to just click enable. It's all I'm going to do. And in the background you can see, bang. And of course everybody loves Facebook. We'll click that. Um, everybody loves the Google Plus one button. So I'm trying to do this with some basic apps that most people would have. Uh, LinkedIn, there's another one. And then everybody's got some kind of weather applet, gadget, something on their screen. So there you go, enabled. So it doesn't matter if this is an applet um, as far as being in a tablet or an extra app in your phone um, or an extension in a browser. This is all kind of doing the same thing. It's pulling information from the internet to propagate something and populate it on your screen. And that's what this is doing. So if I was to come over here and look at the top, you'll see that if I come over to my LinkedIn I'm just gonna click on it for a second it says I'm logged in obviously it logged me in you can see all the packets in the background I'm just gonna click on it and right now it goes from packet 640, 650, 67 see that? so you can immediately see by just clicking on one of these the amount of traffic that it generates if you were to click on it if you don't click on it some of these apps are pretty intensive and they start really hammering um, the network fairly frequently I'll come over here and click on the weather and you can see there's the weather. See? So depending on what you're trying to do uh, with these applets, if you have enough of these things loaded on enough machines, just having them on, just having the browser on, just having the phone on the internet or the tablet on the internet is enough to cause a pretty severe performance issue. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to close down my browser for a moment just so I can show you something. I'm going to uh, bring a command prompt over and this little trick that I do. So right now I kind of I want to start with my next test, but I want to keep the traffic going. So right now I got 851 packets. And what I'm going to do, just so I know this is where I am, I'm going to ping Google.com. So now th there'll be a couple of pings in the background. Good for me. And then from there, what I'm going to do is just simply start up my browser again. And by doing that, the browser loads, and then all these extensions load, and then you will see all the stuff get loaded up in the background again. So again, I haven't really done anything. I've just loaded the browser. 
and you can see the packets pretty pretty extensive like it's it's a noticeable difference so from here if I was to go to statistics and IO graph my favorite little tool I can graphically see the impact of what I've been doing here so I'm just gonna stretch this out a little bit there we go that way you can see what I'm doing and you can see at the beginning there wasn't much and then I started loading these things you can see all the spikes and then at the end I loaded Chrome by itself so if I want to look at this from one perspective the packet perspective there's 250 that'd be 200 that'd be 150 that'd be 100 so it's 100 packets per second and if I had 50 people on here well, that would be 5,000 packets per second so this adds up fairly quickly on a network if I was to come down here and change it to bits let's get my throughput number you can see this is one megabit per second let's just I'm gonna just eyeball this and just give it oh I don't know that's a meg that'd be 750 that'd be 500 that'd be 250 for example um, so I don't know let's just call it 250 kilobits per second so if there was 250 kilobits per second of just idle stuff on average from people and again we had 10 people on the network with this type of application that'd be 2.5 meg again so it doesn't really um, take much for this to add up um, and that's it so this is just yet another layer of noise on the network that can cause performance issues especially on a wireless network so I hope that helps have a good day. Bye for now.